Nearly a week after searching for her killer, police arrest a man in connection with the death of a seven-year-old girl. What police say led up to her death. Investigators are trying to figure out what started a fire here in Frankfurt that killed a two-year-old and critically injured two other people. To most, it looks like a car sliding out of control, but to others, it's a way of driving. We'll show you why some drivers are drifting in Kentucky this weekend coming up. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening to you. An update tonight to a tragic story we've been following out of western Kentucky. Police in Allen County have arrested a man in connection with the death of a seven year old girl. 38 year old Timothy Madden has been charged with the murder of Gabby Doolin. Her body was found Saturday in a pond behind the high school in Scottsville. Madden now faces several other charges as well. Our Garrett Weimer is live in Allen County tonight with our top story. Garrett, what other charges does Madden face? Timothy Madden is not only charged with murder, but kidnapping, rape, and sodomy after Gabby's body was found in not far from here at Allen County Scottsville High School. Timothy, did you kill Gabby Doolin? No, I did not. What do you have to say to the Doolin family? I'm sorry for their loss, so it wasn't me. After his arrest, Madden told reporters he did not kill Gabby. The seven-year-old's body was found near a creek close to the football field here last week. The 38-year-old Madden is from Allen County and went to high school at the same time as Gabby's father. State police arrested Madden this morning at the end of a difficult week for the community and for investigators. The people that work for the state police, along with the people from the Allen County Sheriff's Department and the Scottsville Police Department, have worked tirelessly to bring this matter to the point where we are today. Gabby's father, Brian, posted on Facebook after news of the arrest. He said, quote, please justice take over for my baby, adding that, quote, this animal should not be walking and breathing. Live in Allen County, in Allen County Garrett Weimer, WKYT. A terrible situation there, of course. Madden was booked into the Allen County Jail, but was transferred to the Barron County Jail. We are tracking another devastating story out of Franklin County. Tonight, investigators are trying to figure out how a fire started overnight that killed a two-year-old and critically injured his mother and young sister. It happened in Frankfurt at the Country Hills apartment complex. Monique Blair has the latest on the investigation. I just came out to a big flames. All I seen was smoke. The fire broke out around 1:45 Friday morning. Robin Phillips lives below the apartment that was completely gutted by the fire. She says she watched as emergency crews tried to save a child they had just rescued from the building. When they brought him out, everybody just turned. Their, it seemed like everybody focused on him and him only. And uh, those people standing there crying. Bunched up together. The Franklin County coroner tells us two year old Demetrius Johnson died from smoke inhalation. A GoFundMe page set up for Johnson's family says his mother, Whitney, and one month old sister, Nyla, were also hurt in the fire and are currently fighting for their lives. This tragedy has left this community heartbroken. <laughs> but to hear the two year old pass away, that's. It's just uh, devastating. Now, crews spent all afternoon today boarding up several windows here of this eight unit building. A social worker with the American Red Cross tells us about 27 people were displaced as a result of this fire, and she says it will be long term because there was structural damage to the entire building. In Franklin County, Monique Blair, WKYT. Investigators say it could take several days before they know what caused that fire. They're accused of tampering with ATMs in central Kentucky. Tonight, Lexington police have released some pictures of several people wanted for card skimming. New at 6, Kristen Kennedy is talking to police about their investigation. And Kristen, who are police looking for and what places are these suspects targeting? 
Well, Sam, right now, Lexington police are investigating 10 cases in central Kentucky where they say people are trying to insert those skimmers into ATMs. We do have pictures of the men and women that they say are doing that in central Kentucky at ATMs here. They wouldn't give us specific locations on those ATMs, but they do say that the photos come from various community trust and farmers banks in the area. They are trying to figure out who those individuals are. If they are found, they say they could be facing a charge of tampering with those machines in an attempt to gain account information. And they could face an even steeper charge of identity theft if they find that they've actually used customers' account information. Officers are asking everyone who uses credit or debit cards to be vigilant about checking bank statements and daily charges. And when you go to make a purchase, just to make sure that that card reader doesn't look like it's been tampered with. This type of tampering is not just at banks. It can be at gas station pumps or anywhere where you use a credit card. Um, and in an effort to take that credit card information, steal that credit card information, and use that credit card information um, for themselves. Say that those pictures that they gave to us only come from two banks in the central Kentucky area. They say that card skimming happens at very many places. Live in Lexington, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Investigators agree that card skimming does happen and that these recent cases, they say, do not indicate for them a spike in the crime. A state lawmaker is calling for changes a day after a WKYT investigation questioned why a suspected killer was paroled from prison just months before the deadly shooting. Raleigh Sizemore is accused of killing Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis earlier this month, but six months before Officer Ellis's death, he was in jail serving a 10 year sentence, and a parole board granted him parole after just serving three years. Miranda Combs has the WKYT investigation. These words. We are going to recommend you for parole. Sent Raleigh Sizemore back into society. He was a career criminal, as our investigation uncovered, and was currently serving a 10 year sentence for manufacturing methamphetamine and criminal mischief when two parole board members decided to release him in April after serving less than three years. Please, 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 Mr. Sizemore, for your sake. You know, let's really put your heart into it this time. Six months after this release, Sizemore was charged with the murder of Richmond police officer Daniel Ellis. This decision, again, is unspeakable. The parole board decision was a colossal failure is probably an understatement. In our investigation, Fayette Commonwealth attorney Ray Larson couldn't comment on Sizemore's case, but said there are too many repeat offenders on the streets, and some of that stems from House Bill 463. Soft on crime, criminal friendly law, whose sole goal is to keep people out of custody, including the repeat offenders. That's a comment State Representative John Tilley, who authored House Bill 463, took issue with. The 165 page bill made law in 2011 isn't meant for criminals like Sizemore, he says. The bill's focus was on low level drug offenders and and it did some other programmatic things, but th this had nothing to do with 463. I don't know, how, I don't know how, more, how much more clearly I can say that. The manufacturing meth charge, Tilly says, should have been enough to keep him behind bars. Well, no reasonable person should have paroled this individual. Again, it had nothing to do with the bill. It had to do with a poor human decision. I, just, I look at your criminal history and I think about why you're in prison and, and you have been arrested so many times, it's not even funny. I mean, just arrest after arrest after arrest after arrest. Well, it's, I'm, I'm the worst criminal in the world. It seems like everything I do, I get caught for. He admitted in the parole board hearing that he could not contain himself, could not help himself. Yet somehow they threw their hands up, paroled him, and now somebody died. In Lexington, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Tilly says there needs to be more qualifications and parameters for parole board members. Parole board members, by the way, are appointed by the governor. Meanwhile, Richmond police have charged three teenagers for the robbery of a Papa John's volunteer. Police say 18-year-old Jacob Taylor and two juveniles assaulted a volunteer firefighter who was delivering pizzas on Pine Street Tuesday. Police say the firefighter was volunteering to work for the Richmond Papa John's restaurant Tuesday. The restaurant donated all of its sales that day to the family of fallen police officer Daniel Ellis. 
Some say it's like riding a roller coaster, sliding in a car at 40 to 50 miles an hour, tires smoking, and the driver in complete control. It's called drifting, and a dedicated group of drivers is bringing the exciting sport to Lexington. Buckle up and hang on. Even if you have never heard of drifting, you've probably seen it in action. Like this Lexus commercial that aired during the Super Bowl. If you've ever ridden the beast in the back seat, <laughs> that's what it's like riding in a drift car. Deep inside a Lexington auto uh, shop on a rainy before? night, we yeah, met a group of young drivers who drift. Is it more than a hobby? It, oh, it is. A it's a lifestyle. This is my first dedicated drift car. They spend thousands of dollars on special drift cars, <laughs> travel hundreds of miles to compete in drift events, and love every minute. I do school, I, I work, I do all that stuff, and you know, just kind of what they call the normal life. But when I go out for a weekend, nothing else matters. It, it's the greatest feeling in the world. To an outsider, it looks like the cars are sliding out of control. If you have full control, even though you're sideways, that's the, that's the difference. A lot of people don't realize it. They see it completely sideways and think you're out of control. So you have to really overcome the fear of wrecking, I guess you would say, and you have to learn to control it. To make it as safe as possible, drift drivers have roll bars installed in their cars. If the car actually were to roll over, it would keep the roof from caving in on top of me. They wear helmets at drift events, and drivers sit in a special reinforced seat. Drift events themselves are not car races like you traditionally see in NASCAR and Indy. It's more about drivers showing their skills at controlled sliding around a course, style points, and good old-fashioned burning rubber. To make the car slide, they've installed a special hydraulic brake right next to the driver. This right here is the hydraulic emergency brake. And what it does is it locks up the back tires to help initiate a slide. So when you come into a corner, you'll yank the e-brake, it'll lock up the back tires, and the car will start to slide. And as soon as you get that slide started, what you'll do is you'll actually rev it up and dump the clutch. And what that does is it will continue the slide because the back tires will lose traction. Sounds technical, but the goal is to not wreck or hit something that damages the car or themselves. They do this off the public streets and in a controlled area where even spectators are safe. Drifting is less about beating the other guy and more about helping each other. Drivers who drift say it's a powerful feeling. React to the car and, and you just start to smile and laugh and it's just you get this overwhelming good feeling. Until now, the Lexington drivers who drift had to go to places like Tennessee for events. But tomorrow, November 21st, for the first time, Lexington will have an official drift event. It's at 1631 Old Frankfurt Pike. It begins at 10 a.m. at the training pad for waste management. Spectators are welcome, and drivers need to register ahead of time.